The Eastwood Elite TIG 200 LCD is a professional machine packed with features like 2T, 4T, pulse setting, AC frequency control, and the ability to save your settings. This machine even features a super easy to understand LCD screen for quick on the fly changes. If you're in the market for a machine that is great for everyone from the beginner to the advanced welder, then you need to check out the TIG 200 LCD. Let's get into all the features and show you how to use them. Let's take a look at the menu and show you the options. You have DC stick, AC stick, DC TIG, and AC TIG, as well as your presets. Since most people are gonna be TIG welding with this machine, let's look at DC TIG. This is where you have the option for 2T, 4T, and the foot pedal. Let's start with the foot pedal. There are a bunch of options with the foot pedal setting, but chances are if you decided to use the foot pedal because you want more manual control over the amperage. So you'll only need to worry about pre-flow, peak amperage, and post-flow. Pre-flow is the amount of time gas is flowing out of your torch before the arc begins, but after the pedal is engaged. Set that to your desired setting, then move over to peak amperage which will be the max amperage when the pedal is completely depressed. An important step here is to move over to pulse frequency and ensure that it is off. We will go more into this later, but for general foot pedal control, you do not want this on. Lastly, let's set your post flow, which is the amount of time gas is flowing after your arc is terminated. There you have it, you're ready to start welding with the foot pedal. Now let's get into the more advanced features. 2T is your standard welding operation. Pull the trigger to start an arc your welder will go straight to the peak amperage, and then you can complete your weld. When you're done, release the trigger and the arc will terminate. In this mode, you can also set the starting amperage and upslope time, which is the amount of time that it takes to reach the full welding amperage. There's also a downslope setting that allows you to ramp down the power for a set amount of time. Starting from the left, set your pre-flow. Again, this is the amount of time that gas will flow from your torch before the arc is initiated, but after the trigger is pulled. If you wanted to use the upslope time, then you can set it here. Don't forget, you'll need to set the starting amperage too. I'll leave it off because I want the arc to go to full power right away. Now you can set your peak amperage, which is the amperage that you will be welding at for the entire time. We're going to ignore peak time, pulse frequency, and base amps here, but one thing to note is that you still need to scroll to pulse frequency and turn it off. We're gonna go over this more later. Again, if you wanted to set downslope time, you can set it up here, as well as the ending amperage. Lastly, set your post flow, which is the amount of time gas flows from your torch after the trigger is released and the arc is terminated. You're now ready to weld using the trigger operation on your welder. 4T is a more advanced option. Think of this like cruise control. It essentially allows you to remove your figure from the torch when you're welding. You pull the trigger to start an arc, which begins at a lower amperage, also known as your starting amperage. Release the trigger and it will slope up to your peak amperage, which is the power you will be welding at the entire time. When you're done your weld, press the trigger and the machine will slope down to your ending amperage. Release the trigger and it will terminate your arc. The benefit of this is that you can preheat your material with the starting amperage and then ramp up to your peak amperage to complete your weld. Now let's set this up. From the left, set your pre-flow, which we talked about earlier. Now we can set the starting amps. Let's go with 50 amps. Next, set your upslope, which is the amount of time it takes to reach the peak amperage. I want two seconds for this. For the peak amps, which is your actual welding amperage, let's set this at around 150. For regular 2T and 4T, we do not need to worry about the pulse frequency on peak time or base amps. However, we need to turn pulse frequency off again. Let's move to downslope, which is the amount of time it takes to ramp down to the ending amperage. I will go with two seconds again. Set your ending amperage, I'll go with 50 amps again. Lastly, set your post flow. That's how easy it is to set up 4T. Now we can go back and talk about the features we skipped over and show you how to set up pulse. Pulse is a function that allows you to automatically fluctuate the amperage up and down. You may see people do this by punching the foot pedal and then releasing it. They're basically doing pulse, but without the programmable settings that you get with this machine. Now let's go over this a little bit more. Now you can use pulse on 2T, 4T, and foot pedal settings, but for this demonstration, we're gonna set it up in 4T. Now all the settings we have shown you are the same, but now we can add on peak time, pulse frequency, and base amps. But what does this all mean? On peak time is the amount of time the welder is outputting peak amps. So if you set this at 60%, then your welder will weld at peak amperage for 60% of the time and be at base amps for 40% of the time. Pulse frequency is the frequency at which the welder will repeat the pulsing cycle. 0.5 hertz is a two second cycle, one hertz is a one second cycle, two hertz is a half second cycle, and so on. 
So basically it's the amount of time that you will go from peak amperage to base amperage. Lastly is base amps, which is the minimum amperage you'll be using for the pulse setting. Just to note, this is on a percentage scale. If you set your peak amperage to 200 amps and your base amps at 50%, your base amperage will be 100 amps. Now let's set this up. I'll use all the same settings from the 4T explanation and move right to on peak time. I want to set this to 50%. So 50% of the time it will be welding at peak amperage and 50% of the time it will be welding at base amperage. Let's set our pulse frequency to 1 Hz. So we'll be at peak amperage for 0.5 seconds and base for 0.5 seconds. Lastly, I'll set my base amperage to 70%. So for the time we're at peak welding, we'll be at 150 amps and at base we'll be at 70%, which is about 105 amps. Again, the rest of the settings are the same as the 4T demonstration. Now you're able to weld in 4T mode with pulse setup. Like I mentioned before, you can also set this up in 2T and foot pedal mode. Let's move over to the AC side of TIG welding. You also get the 2T, 4T, and foot pedal modes, so most of the settings we've gone through are the exact same. And as always, you can reference the chart on the side of the machine to get baseline settings, depending on the material you're working with. However, we're going to introduce two new features, which are AC balance and AC frequency. AC balance adjusts the amount of time that the machine is on electrode positive. A higher percentage here results in more cleaning effect and a smoother weld seam. However, your penetration will be more shallow. A lower percentage will result in deeper penetration, but less cleaning. AC frequency creates a more intense and concentrated arc with a smoother weld seam. This would be helpful in tight areas where you don't want to damage any nearby features on a project. A good starting frequency is about 120 Hz for a tighter arc. Remember that lower AC frequencies create a wider seam. A good baseline frequency is about 80 Hz, and you can adjust from there. Let's show you how to adjust this. Again, we'll be working with the same 4T settings as before. Once you get to AC balance and AC frequency, you can adjust to your desired settings or reference the chart on the side of the machine. Lastly, let's talk about the programmable presets. You have five different presets here that you can save. Let's say you bounce back and forth between sheet metal and thick steel all the time. Simply save two presets and you can quickly jump back and forth. To view your presets, navigate to the home menu and select the preset icon. You can see here we already have four presets saved Simply click on one if you wanted to use it using that knob. If you wanted to save something in slot 5, then you should navigate to the home menu, select the operation you want, let's say DC TIG, then we want 2T, and put all your desired settings for this preset. And once you're happy with your settings, scroll over to the preset option on the bottom right hand side of the menu. Click this knob, it'll bring you to the preset menu, scroll to slot 5, click the knob one more time, there you go, you have officially saved to slot 5. Now there's a ton of great features in this machine, but don't let all the functions here scare you. It's really easy to navigate and set up. For more information on this machine, click the link to visit eastwood.com.